Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry Podcast. We talk about our favorite food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, D Dumb and Hungry, and I'm my child. And thank you for joining us. I hope you're doing all right. That's literally all it says. Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm Macho. Well, and thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing all right. Macho, how are you doing today? It's nice to see you. I mean, I'm doing all right. We're here. I exist. Yeah, I guess. That's a good start. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's good to have you back. It's been a minute, but uh, I'm probably more... Relieved than you are, but uh, that's fine. <laughs> but why? I don't know. I just feel like uh, it's been too long, and uh, but I think you've had a nice time to, I don't know, disconnect, get away, and... Uh, Never long enough. I guess not. I guess not. But I know because since you do load this so much, I thought I'd uh, kind of soften that, soften the blow for you and, uh, I don't know, get some people on and um, get get them on on here so that you don't have to... To talk as often, I guess. I don't know. Is that Very work? helpful. Okay. I'm quite grateful. Good, good, because um, that's what's happening today. So um, we got a couple of guests with us, uh, so we want to bring them on, and we're going to bring them on right now. So let's welcome uh, back uh, John, but we also want to welcome on Daniel. So uh, welcome. Hello, hello. Yes, welcome everyone. John, I don't know if you realize that you were going to Come back on so soon, if <laughs> at all or ever. At all, yeah. <laughs> but well, this is a succession plan and training, so <laughs> that's what my notes say. Yeah, it can't go fast enough. No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> my just like, let's get this done. Let's do this. Cool, I'm, I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready to sign out now. Just. <laughs> um. Yeah. To those who. Uh, who may not recall, John joined us um, some time ago to talk about his adventures in Italy and kind of give us a little uh, guidance on uh, the places to go and things to eat and, and all that. So, But he's back. I'm not sure why, but we'll find out, I guess, as we go along. But we also have uh, Daniel with us today, so welcome. And uh, just tell us a little bit, I guess, Daniel, where, about yourself, where you're coming from and you know all that. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, I guess, yeah, name's Daniel. Grew up in Los Angeles. Um, so, been been here for a while. Been around the country as well for work, trips, etc. So, love food everywhere, but food in LA is the best. Right on. That's good. That's a good statement um, to back up a, a podcast like this. So, excellent. Um, we know uh, Daniel by way of John, by way of uh, his wife, by way of it, or his sister. So, anyway, moving on. Pains what? in that yeah. link, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's a chalkboard? How do you do that? <laughs> Follow the path, yeah. people. Okay, keep up. Um, but we're here to talk uh, food and our food adventures, you know, um, and things like that. But we just wanted to start off, of course, a little catching up and see what you guys have been up to. Uh, we'll be getting into a little bit. Um, into what, especially what uh, Micho has been up to and Daniel as well, but what's been going on with you guys? Hope you guys have been doing okay. All right. Not everyone join us. This is is exactly how my work calls go. You (laughs) pose a question with a group of people and it's just, it's just silence. Well, we'll just start with that. People. There you go. (laughs) We'll start with you, John. I mean, what is going on? Uh, not too much. You know, we had the fourth last week so we had a, a nice little gathering and did a bit of a in, in uh unnecessary and excessive consumption but it was a good time uh yeah you want i mean what what exactly did you consume what did we have well sir dumb and hungry himself had his own burger pop up so we had some <laughs> of your burgers your uh caramelized onion burgers and then we had we had ribs. We had uh, we had a lot of vegetables, which is very unusual for our group. 
but I think it's a sign of the times and <laughs> a right reflection on. of how rapid. Exactly, I was about to say a reflection of how rapidly our bodies are deteriorating. So it was nice. It was finally a balanced meal. <laughs> that, that cliff years. hits hard at thirty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a switch goes off. Thank God I was not there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you dodged that one. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, the fourth was nice. Had a nice uh, meet up with uh, with friends and, and everything. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of food, but a good balance, I'd say, of, uh, of different things. So it's pretty good. Um, yeah, what about you, Daniel? What's going on? Yeah, so uh, yeah, fourth had. So I guess John and I shared in laws. So there's that's the link in this long chain shared in laws. Uh, they they came to town and stayed at at my place with my wife and I, and that was a uh, fun um, little bit of stress, but a lot of food. So a lot of dim sum, um, a lot of, a lot of home cooking seafood. Um, so it's a good time over the fourth. And then as we'll talk about later, did some anime expo stuff, which was uh, my first time going, which was a ton of fun. And then went back to work, which is not fun. And actually had to go into an office, which is new, which that's kind of <laughs> weird, but yeah. Yeah, I guess that's just also a sign of the times. Got to go back into physical offices. Dang. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, for the last couple of years, it's all been remote. And then finally, the, the order came down. It's time to show up. Mm-hmm. So, everyone, yeah, everyone assembled. It was uh, bring your own computer day at work. And, you know, everyone <laughs> brought their gear, got set up. And now, yeah, now I drive in and I'm a corporate i guess i was a corporate drone before but now i'm a corporate drone in the office so it's different <laughs> um, please tell me it's at least hybrid uh yes tuesday okay. wednesday thursday in the office yeah okay good to see you guys for holding out for so long that is true <laughs> <laughs> it was uh it's a process there's still uh there's still a lot of people who because i mean we hired way more people than we had desks for so there's still a lot of people who are not but it's a process <laughs> So people are like working Turns from uh, people need desks. They do. Yeah. Are Especially working... Yeah. Sorry, Angel. No, I mean are they working from like uh like break rooms and utility closets and you know, I don't know. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> Fortunately not that crazy. The ones who they didn't have space for are still just working at home. But... Nice. Yeah, the uh I'm trying to think. Although our conference room our conference room like uh A V solution's pretty terrible, so all of us joined the conference calls from our desk which is really weird to have like three people all on the same call like sitting next to each other right so you know work in progress <laughs> well the uh the audio bleeds in i guess when you uh, kind of do those things um yeah just a little bit i feel like it's a little weird i am curious though for uh, the working man uh is it um <laughs> did we get uh did we get monday off you know because it fell the holiday fell on a tuesday so um, oh, I did not. Did anyone else like that? Was that was definitely a big surprise coming up to the week? Was like, wait a minute, like <laughs> <laughs> nobody told me this. <laughs> yeah, I had to take it off for for AX. So that's right, that's right. But it wasn't yeah, getting to you, like a like a holiday. Yeah, anything. yeah, I had to use PTO for it. Mm-hmm. Just the Tuesday. No charity for us either. We were just part of the regular working man population. Okay. Well, next year I think it'll be similar should fall on a, like a Thursday. Thursday. So. Yeah. yeah. I was so excited because, I don't know about you guys, but I got Juneteenth off this year, which was my first yeah. time, and I was like, mm. yeah, extra holiday. Like, right. this year's awesome. Yeah. And then, it, yeah, then like two weeks later, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, I know where they got this day from. <laughs> oh, man. And that's also a holiday that, uh, that'll move around. So, um, yeah. Anyway, just be prepared. All right. Sounds good. Well, what about you, Maisha? Um, I think this would be a good way to kind of segue into uh, you know, what's going on. And But yeah, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. It's been since the last time that, uh, that I was on it, a lot's gone on. At New York happened, AX happened, uh, some Ray Lakuma event thing. I don't know. Yeah, there's just a lot, a lot going on. Wow. It's going to gloss over that last one, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, show, I'll show it later. But oh, uh, so. yeah, they had a they had a Rilakuma of a US tour or whatever. So Oli went and she was she bought some some new Americuma bears. Uh, remind Ooh, me what dope. that is. That's a that is an anime, like, I suppose. No, it's um like I don't remember who, but it's a someone's 
reaction or I guess response to Sanrio. So it's a the company Sanex, and they have their own like mascot characters. Rilakuma being the 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 what's it called the Hello Kitty version, their version of Hello Kitty. And so this one's when, uh, okay. It's a little bear, and I mean, it's got America themed. I mean, it's a bear. That's totally themed. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, you bear, say actually. it's a bear, Angelo, but I feel like you're not understanding quite like the impact of this. <laughs> well, let's take a look. We have many pictures of bears here. Um, <laughs> it's not a bear. It's like I can a all... kitty. It's it's a something in a bear suit. Oh wait, so is this part of the Hello Kitty franchise, or is it? A, no, it's a no, separate no. thing. Competitors. Let's see, okay. It does ask: Is uh, Rilakkuma a guy or a girl? Nobody knows. Yeah, you oh. don't need to get into that. And oh. it's they got a gold one for the for the U.S. tour. Oh, that's 20th, pretty dope. Twentieth anniversary. I mean, that's... when they go on on tour, quote unquote. I don't know. Like they just had, like they had, uh, what for this event or whatever. It was just they were on in a bunch of cities in the U.S. where they had like exclusive merch. They had uh, a pit photo op with someone in the in the suit. So in this, like with one of the characters in the suit. So that was cool. It's like a, it's like a pop-up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just for a weekend in each city. Right. But with bears instead of food, and that's why Angelo got confused. He's like, it's uh, yes. not the language, not a communal language. It. It. Who knows? But it's, <laughs> but it's exclusive, you know? Like everyone can understand, like exclusive, time limited. Yeah. It's right. Like, right. That's right. important stuff. <laughs> Collector's cool. item. So it just lives there. Now. Sh- yeah, she, she was planning to buy like one or two things. She bought uh, so much. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. name of the game. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the week before AX though. That's the unfortunate part. It's exclusive. Ooh. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Very cool. Um, I mean, as for myself, I'm just uh, I've just been eating as usual. So um, nothing. Do you do anything else? Um, mostly eating. So, uh, I mean, you were cooking, so that's like kind of both ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And burning myself. And, it's just uh, a means to an end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um, why, don't you, why don't you elaborate on burning yourself? I don't know. I just, um, you know, so I bought this, uh, this griddle, um, like a flat top griddle from Blackstone, as um, most people um do when getting into that kind of thing and um i just uh it's hot the grill is hot that's all i can tell you so just there's a pro tip right there mind blowing <laughs> grill is that's, hot that's what the people come here for these pro tips mm-hmm. this is high quality <laughs> content people so. right i mean i appreciate hat. that i think i think my lesson is yeah if i ever approach a griddle to wear a fire suit so i appreciate that thank <laughs> you <Yeah>. <laughs> So, um, th- I mean, really the only thing, I think overall, you know, the cooking and everything went well. We made smash burgers, uh, fried onion burgers specifically. Um, you know, the only thing is that, again, it's hot, so I, I didn't have gloves or anything or anything to really protect from the, from the heat. And, you know, I, didn't, I don't do this too often, so, you know, I'm just not used to it. So, um, it was hot. So, um, I, did, I had another chance to kind of do another round of them. Um, you know, uh, and I did buy a set of gloves for that, and uh, that worked out a lot better. Um, but um, you know, we'll see if I if keep doing it or do it again anytime soon. But it was uh, it was fun. It was uh, it was and they turned out pretty good, I think. Um, John was there; he could tell you. Probably like threw him out. It was um, pretty good, I think. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Good start. Um, let's see. I'll send you something. I'll send you. You're checking the mail. Um, so as far as the other things, though, as far as um, what I've eaten otherwise, some things I wanted to mention. Um, dim sum's always good. So we <laughs> met up with some friends to have uh, dim sum at Atlantic Seafood, you know, out in uh, that Monterey Times Square. Is that, is that what it's called? Whatever it is. It's Atlantic just a, Times Square? Atlantic sure, Times Square. Is I've that what I cook? A, a, I've got a question about dim sum for you guys. So all the names, and, you know, as, as the white guy, I guess, of the four here... <laughs> I cannot keep track of the names, man. There's I, NBC. I don't either. There's Capital. Elect, like, I can only know like oh. street locations. Like, uh, if you tell me like it's that corner, I got you. Oh, I'll you know. There. Okay, so you know it in that in that respect. But if you're telling me like 
if you tell me like, oh, it's the ca- like we're going to like NBC seafood, mm-hmm. I'm like, mm-hmm. that means nothing to me. I, I have no <laughs> idea. Those are, those are just letters that people strung together. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think generally speaking, at least here in LA, I think uh, you know, capital is a big one. You know, that's probably a very those yeah. capital and NBC are probably the big ones that people know more commonly. Um, you know, and uh, but so I don't know. What are what are the other ones that come to mind? The ones that people know, or the ones that you frequent? <laughs> uh, I think that people know fairly well. Like if I guess if you were to ask someone um, who uh, may be a little more familiar, I I think that they would bring those names up um, more commonly. So there there's um, I don't know, but the things that they as far as what they offer, I think you know it's fairly the offerings are fairly you know similar, right? Um, I, I thought that's what you were going to talk about, like the dishes that are served. That's what I can't keep track of, right? All the different names, you know. Oh hot. well, well, yeah. I, I'm not the one who orders, right? I have the privilege <laughs> of being. I have the privilege of being like, if they walk by and I try to say something, they just look at me and they're like, "No, you're. We're not here to talk to you." Right, so exactly. I, I leave that to everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't have that chance. I didn't have the privilege uh, this time because, you know, in fact, I'm the one who's doing the ordering. So that's a big. That's a big problem. <laughs> The biggest so you mistake. guys went hungry, is what you're saying. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> they just starved. They just no, gave us. Probably, they just gave us tea or like something. Dollars all around. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't know. There, there's uh, certainly you know those that stand out as far as uh, locations, uh, but I don't know. We'll have to find a. I'm sure there's a list somewhere of like. Well, there's one that we don't go to too often, but to take one out of Daniel's playbook, because I have no idea what it's called, but it's for the 99 ranches on Del Mar and Valley. They're pretty big ones on the third floor of some shopping center. That one's yeah, pretty so popular. T- exactly. To me, that one's just the fourth floor, like, in some place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Up an elevator. Yeah, I'm kidding. 99, 99 ranch. That's that's the Dimson play. I feel like that's just how ubiquitous they are, right? Like, you just, you don't need a name, you just need you know, a street or something. And so it's like, okay, we'll just go to I, that one. I think the only name I know is Lunasia for better or worse. Like, I guess they're, they're a big enough place. that I'm like, okay, I remember Lunasia. Yeah. <laughs> I'll one up you and I know elite. So Lunasia and elite, Ooh, the rest okay. of them are just street names. Yeah. Yeah. Elite <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well, the thing about elite though, I think they're still closed. Maybe we'll have to fact check that, but I think they're still closed because of a, uh, you know, a fire that they had, uh, had to go through or whatever. Oh, damn. Um, so <laughs> they had to go through <laughs> <laughs> to endure, you know. Um, but I think they're still closed, unfortunately. But uh, I can tell you that Atlantic uh, Seafood is not closed. Um, but yeah, so we I chose that place because um, I guess I do go there enough where I'm just kind of comfortable with the you know with the setting <clears throat> and, and getting there and whatever. But I guess also it's just one of those places that still uh, offers the food in uh, push carts. So, um, you know, people go uh, around. Are you, are you a push cart fan? Well, I wanted the people I brought, you know, um, I don't think they've had dim sum like that or they haven't been to the SGV to experience that kind of thing. So I wanted to give them that experience. Um, otherwise, I'd probably be okay just ordering off, you know, a sheet of paper, right? Checking off the boxes and all that. That would be okay. But um yeah. I feel like, I mean, I like the push carts. It's nostalgic, but I feel mm-hmm. like what happens every single time I go to a place with a push cart, there's always like one dish that you're like, I want that one and I can't find it. And then by the time it comes yeah. around, it's 40 minutes later and you're yeah. like, I'm not quite as excited, but I've been waiting so long. Like, I still need to get it. You're, you're <laughs> absolutely right. That's exactly what I uh, dealt with. Yeah. My, that dish in my case was, uh, I think it was the Hargau. The, it's you know, always the, sh- the Hargau. Every okay. time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> It's like we got as I, I was pointing and calling out to different uh, different carts and stuff, um, and they were just I was asking for hargao, but they would give me things that are similar to hargao, like some <laughs> some some shrimp like filling in a rice wrapper, steam rice wrapper, but it's not quite the hargao. It's like it's the shrimp with vegetable or just like vegetable for some reason. I don't know. And they said, "Is that good?" And I I don't want to say no. And mo- I mean. I'm already deep into it. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. I'll I'll take it. <laughs> you show me five different things off the cart. Like, I... so I'm just kind of exasperated right now. I'm desperate, so I just get it. The other thing, uh, 
I had a hard time finding was, um, but I did get was, and I don't you've already forgot the name is as John refers to them as the footballs, the fried mochi ish. Mm, you know, what That's do you call those? Pork, the fried pork footballs. Oh, pork balls. Yeah, but what's uh, the proper name? You want the Chinese name? Are you sure? And and silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember. You know, I even now it's like. Because my just... problem is, I I go to dim sum with John, so I also just know it as football thing. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I think that's the it's, shortcoming here. It's um, <laughs> it, it is called hamsoi ball. Okay. But I just refer to it as a football thing. I don't order anything at dim sum either. I sit. I try to sit as far away from the right. aisles as possible. Right. And then I let I let, then I send my wife off into into the crossfire so she can do all the ordering. Because that's the other thing too that's difficult if you don't speak the language is when the cards come by. Mm-hmm. They're all sealed in metal containers, but you can't exactly. see through them. Exactly. And so so it's you, really easy you kind of have to, to guess, things. or you have to observe when they go to adjacent tables, like to see what they're serving what out want. there. Yeah. Um, and if they yeah. have something that's that looks similar, even though they're all like in steam wrapping dumplings or something like, they all look similar. But it's like maybe that car has it, so maybe they'll have the one I'm looking for. And if I say the name remotely close to what they, uh, what it is, maybe they'll know what I'm talking about. Um, right, and most of the time, and then once so. they realize that they have an item that's hard to push out, they will confer amongst themselves and be like, "Oh, this table over here keeps ordering the shrimp wrapped in rice paper. Let's keep bringing it over there." <laughs> and that's why you guys had four orders of it. Yeah, um, well, we didn't to start, um, but right, yeah. and then it got overwhelmed. With we shrimp. got we got several orders of things that were like that, but then uh, yeah, and and then when it finally did come, it's like, yes, I want like three or four. <laughs> orders of that please put them on my table now you know and then you get all the stamps you know it's all that anyway that's how they right. stamp Bingo. so anyway yeah <laughs> um so that was uh that was dim sum um we also uh also had a chance to visit bakari i don't remember if i've been to bakari before um i don't know if any of you have but it's a uh it's a rest- like wine like the all you can drink wine bar lunch, uh, or- oh Shoot, lunch and dinner, I guess. I All right. Know. Well, I wasn't even aware of that, but okay, good okay. to know. <laughs> my my <laughs> takeaway is that it's uh, it's small bites like tapas style, you know, um, with influences of Spain, uh, Italian, uh, Mediterranean dishes like that. Um, but things that are meant to be shared. Um, but the uh, there are several locations throughout LA, but uh, the one we went to was the one on Third, which I think is one of the more well known ones. It's uh, not too far from the Grove on Third, and um. It, you go. I mean, the food is good. Uh, it is good, but I think a lot of people certainly go there for the vibes. You know, when you go to the storefront, the storefront's actually just—it's like a tunnel. It's like this kind of um, you know uh, uh, tunnel, kind of lined in brick or whatever, and you kind of walk through, and then it opens up to this larger outdoorish patio kind of setting. Um, you know, nice greenery and trees and and coverings, and um, just a nice place to to hang out. I I think. Um, Again, I don't drink too much, so it's not too. I don't know too much. Uh, but if you're saying that they have all you can drink things, then uh, that would be something worth kind of looking at again. I don't know, but yeah, no, I agree with you though. It's definitely more of a vibe check spot. That whole street though is is a pretty like it's got a lot of options it, on that it street. Definitely it's does. a good place to hang out. And I will say, while we were having dinner, I was um, suggesting, because on that same block, I don't know, Mike, if you can picture where that is, but it is only like a, not more than a block from Slab Barbecue. So I was thinking, oh, I wonder good. if after we had dinner, <laughs> we could stop by, maybe just for. That's the normal progression, right? After you have some Spanish tapas, you're like, let's get some brisket on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's... This is how they traditionally do it, right? I mean, you guys don't do that. I mean, what? <laughs> uh, sadly, we didn't. We didn't. But what we did instead, um, since we were in the neighborhood, I suppose, or at least uh, reachable, we um, we took a visit out to uh, Larchmont Village, and um, we visited the new uh, Leven Bakery. Um, so, uh, Leven is. A New York-based uh, bakery, super popular, that's made it, its way out here with their first uh, brick-and-mortar location <coughs> on Larchmont, and on uh, Larchmont. they are known for their um, their cookies, right? I don't know. Have either of you uh, or any of you tried them before? I have not, but I got a thing in the mail that was like one free cookie from Levent to celebrate their opening. So, so 
I'm waiting with like anticipation for what you're about to say. <laughs> like if it's good, I'm like I'm going after this. Well, I, cookies, I you know, that's the thing. It's like I I will say, yeah, to start, I really enjoyed it. I I don't want to overhype it because, you know, maybe it's not to what you expect it to be, but I think um for uh what people have been talking about, um it it is a great it is a great thing to try. I actually had the chance to try it before. I not not that I went to New York, but they all they offer uh, the cookies to uh, be shipped, you know, nationally. So I I don't know. I think it was during the pandemic or something. Um, so I'd ordered it and uh, I tried uh, a set. They come frozen and you, um, yeah, you just kind of uh, reheat them in the oven. And um, so the the cookie is I don't know. It's um, any you can remotely maybe describe it better than I can, but it's like cookie meets scone kind of deal. I don't know, but yeah, it looks huge. Yeah, it's it's huge. It's like a mm-hmm. hockey puck or something, you know. Are they like gooey kind of on the inside, or is it like pretty crunchy it, all the it, way through? It it's a soft, yeah, it's a soft interior, you know, almost Ooh, um, kind of almost cookie. gooey. Yeah, it's kind of gooey, uh, wet, kind of a wet uh, thing there. So the the outside is is definitely more. Uh, I don't. How do I describe it? It's like I don't want to say it's hard, but it's like um, you know, it's got a firm exterior, I guess. But then when you bite into it, yeah, it's gooey and it it kind of um, gives away to your bite. And uh, this is the most popular. This chocolate chip like walnut flavor is the most popular one. And um, but they also have other flavors like uh, this one, like double chocolate, or I think they had like a Rocky Road, I think, on special. Or something. Oh, cool. But you can see like for maybe for scale like how large these you know balls of dough are i think um i think the trick is that it's you know because they're so large they bake it at a slight you know higher temperature um to give it that you know to allow it to cook through but also give it that kind of you know um that exterior or whatever uh, that it is but yeah, I mean, you should definitely go out there, check it out, especially if you have like a coupon for a free cookie. I mean, like, why would you say no to that? I know. That's a $5 coupon right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> the cookies are $5. Um, I, so, all right. Ooh. And they have other they have other baked goods as well, um, but I think most people go there for the cookie. When we went there, it was probably about I don't know, like eight o'clock or something, sometime in the evening, and the line was still pretty deep. I think we we waited we uh-huh. about I don't know forty minutes or something. So um, originally, actually, I wasn't. I don't know, although you know, I've had my share of uh, waiting in line, but I don't know. I just initially I wasn't feeling it. I didn't want to like bring him in, you know, bring these guys to wait in a line. Um, but for something like that Daniel said, thirty changes you, man. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. But you've uh, had us suffer through lines with you, but these people get <laughs> preferential yeah. treatment? Right, right. They're the, the VIPs. The real friends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but they're the ones who, uh, they convinced, they're the ones who convinced, like, yeah, let's just try it out or whatever. So we did. And actually, so it's right across, not, I think it's pretty much right across the street from Salt and Straw that's there. Oh, so, so it's the northern part of Larchmont. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so we... Uh, well, one of us waited in line, and the rest of us went to get salt and straw first. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, sure. pass the time. So that's um, yeah, pass the time with some delicious ice cream. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So that that's the thing. Sharing, there was like a there's yeah. like a Diddy Reese situation happening, right? It could yeah. be yeah. potentially yeah. you could get a couple oh, that'd of be um, a monster like ice cream. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, right. yeah. yeah, it's like you oh, would need a nutrition <laughs> Don't look at no, you don't. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine you buy a pint, like you buy a small pint of ice cream, <laughs> and then you you just sandwich the the Levin on top. You, right. know, you remove the outer packaging and you exactly. place it on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to scoop it out. Yeah, you just want to peel. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. See, just take a knife. <laughs> yeah, slice through the packaging. Yeah, get a clean, you know, kind of thing around, and then just, yep, it's good. Serves good one, move. Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, um, I know we're kind of running along here, but I mean, like some other places I wanted to mention though. Um, we've mentioned this place before out in Long Beach. Is a place called Slap Moan. John came over one time, and we, uh, oh. uh, I had um, immediately said like, "Yeah, we need to, uh, we need to eat something." So, um, <laughs> of course, but they have these uh, Cambodian flavored like chicken wings. So 
like dry rubs, wet, you know, wet sauces or whatever. Um, but, uh, John, what do you, do you remember, um, how it was or what you had? I don't even to recall. I think I was just so mortified by the fact that we were supposed to eat deep dish after that. I just couldn't <laughs> even enjoy the wings. I was just like, like please survive much. today. Yeah. 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 But so wing, like, wings and I pizza is like a classic survive. combo though. That's it what is, I said. It is, but this is, but this is the Detroit style pizza on top of a regular order of wings. It was, <laughs> it was a lot. The wings are good. Um, okay. We had what was it called? It was it was a Cambodian dirt. It was yeah. the the dry mm-hmm. rub one? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So lot lot of citrus, lot of lemongrass flavors. It was really nice. Good. And then the other one we had, I don't think it was very Cambodian. It was a habanero mango. Yeah, but uh, it was but also it was tasty. Good. Yeah, and then yeah, as you said, we we wanted to chase that flavor, so we uh, got some deep dish pizza after that. Not deep Who's dish, we? but like D- Detroit style pizza. <laughs> I mean, we we went we went out there. So there's a place uh, out in Long Beach called Valentino's, um, just a local spot. Um, I don't I don't think it necessarily like for most people they probably won't know it unless they're there or they're in that area. But um, they serve like Italian stuff, but they have this like uh, Detroit style pizza, um, and what that is is basically just raised like sourdough like bread pan pizza, you know, square shaped and you know, kind of a, I don't know. So that kind of thing. So it was okay. I thought it was all right. Um, you know, we, I think John's kind of on this kick to try out different Detroit style, uh, pizza places. So that's just one place there, I guess, while he was, since he was there anyway. So it's a good style. Uh, after his pizza experience in Italy, I think he needs some. <laughs> from Detroit. It really like, sounded Detroit. like it. Like it, it really did a number on him. It seemed so. I'm not right. I'm not quite sure, but okay. I, it's it's my rehabilitation. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor's orders. Yeah, but uh, one other place I did I did want to mention. Um, so you know I work out turn not work out, but I work. Yeah, I was gonna say of, what? <laughs> I was gonna say finish that thought. <laughs> is, it, is it two words or one? It's like, <laughs> that's right. Um, but I you know. Um, kind of more west and um and uh, there's a a spot that um i had found i i you know took some coworkers to it's a again a small place a local place called uh, pick your plate and um it's a filipino kind of fast food joint and what that is really when we say that is um if you have, if you can just picture walking into a space and there's like kind of this cafeteria style kind of thing. You have like the glass and like the different trays of food that you can pick from and you point to, and that's kind of what they refer to those. Like you point to your foods um, and it's different, you know, Filipino dishes or whatever. And uh, you know, before that, a lot of, we were probably getting a lot of um, like Thai food, Indian food from places that were pretty good. But then um, we just wanted, I just wanted to see if we could venture out a little more. Um, and so I, you know, I came across this place and said, let's try it. And, um, I gotta say like, it's, you know, it's a great place. Um, not only cause the food is, uh, you know, it's great. It's well cooked. It's, you've got a good variety of, you know, of your standard Filipino fare. Uh, but, uh, the, um, the people who work there are incredibly nice, very hospitable, you know, and very kind. And it just, uh, I think it's, good enough for you know for these uh for us to come back you know regular i feel like also the value of the um of what you buy is just it's kind of uh it's actually quite good so i mean like a one item plate for example like a combination plate is like less than it's like eight or nine dollars you know and it's just think of that like you know that styrofoam container right with like the three you know three things and then even if you get one item they just like fill that they fill that <laughs> container, you know, like half the half the container is the food, and then like the other half is going to be like rice or noodles, you know, and um, so even like a one item is like crazy, and two items is like eleven, twelve dollars, whatever, and um, it's uh, it's a lot, but it's uh, it's great value. So I feel like it's ruined us because even like when I think about it, like fast food these days isn't really cheap no, anymore trying right? to get like panda express one item yeah. is like 12 bucks at least yeah God, exactly damn. you know and sure they'll serve it in the same approximately safe size container but um 
you know, at these places, it's like they just, they'll fill it up. They'll just like pack it in. Oh, that's and, awesome. You know, so um, this was a, a place that I really enjoyed. And then it's crazy because even though I introduced them, it's like these guys are going a lot more often than I am um, <laughs> because they just, I mean, the food's great, you know, uh, the people are, are really nice um, and uh, it's just, uh, just a great local spot out there. So that's um, pick your plate. But, um, but with that, um, yeah, we're just, we're just speaking of more food. I mean, again, but, uh, we want to thank everyone for, you know, joining us. We keep talking about our food adventures, you know, these local spots and pop-ups and, and everything in between. Mm-hmm. We've got good food and good people that we, that we come across. But, uh, we wanted to kind of talk today about, um, you know, some things, uh, that we've kind of alluded to already, um, I'm going to kind of let my child kind of take, uh, take it away here because he's been off on some pretty interesting adventures. Um, so kind of let you see, you know, share what you've been up to with that. Okay. Yeah. So about the time that you did the, uh, the Italy episode with John, I was actually on my way to New York, um, for a friend's wedding is what it was. So she's been planning it for almost two years. So glad it finally actually happened. We went to New York. It was, it was actually my first time as an adult, you know, going to new york first time with a job basically not with my not with my parents mm-hmm. so there's a being in control different... of your monetary decisions yeah <laughs> Ooh, never a good thing for me though <laughs> but you know it was good it was it was a lot of fun honestly like we uh we watched we hit a we watched a play um what else did we do we went to i mean the first thing we did because we got there early we took a red eye uh ended up getting bagels for breakfast it was great I don't. Uh, I didn't know this, but apparently they don't toast their bagels in New York. So, yeah. but but is good. the bagel really better? I don't know. I'm because I'm mm. gonna say yes compared to like bagels I've had here, but it's not too often. So, well, I, I mean, know. where would you get bagels here? I mean, I'm just curious. Like, like Noah's, Noah's right? Sure. Yeah. So on lunch like, month. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, but okay. forget that. I'm just gonna get know bagels you have in New York. What's that? What bagel did you have in New York? We went to a Leo's bagel. It was because we were staying in the financial district, so it was within walking distance from the hotel. So we dropped our stuff off and walked there. It was freaking huge. It was like eighteen dollars, but it was massive. It was like the size of my face mm. with the thickness of a, of a of a hockey puck. Or is more, that like two hockey pucks? Is that at least uh, three C's of thickness, or <laughs> maybe four? Mm. That is quite thick. So yeah. So um, it was it was really good. What was in your bagel? I go back. Uh, we I I forgot what it, which one it was, but it was one of the specialty bagels. It was cream cheese. Uh, of course, that one in there with the with the with the salmon. Oh, the lock yeah. isn't this like a lox, lox bagel, yeah. right? That's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Plastic. Yeah, it's, and it, the, it, that exact one, and it was huge. So Excellent. for eighteen dollars, you finish it. it? Uh, yes. The okay. fat question, John. You're, you're, what, who you're asking? Listen, remember, I'm a host of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I'm trying to learn what do I need to do to be able to be a good successor, and I'm starting to realize I don't want to be. Oh, we started trading you years ago for that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, so I will say, uh, we, that was the only bagel we had, though. Unfortunately. Mm. Um, well, okay. So. I mean, okay. What else is if not bagels, I mean pizza. You know the usual. Okay. That's an acceptable right. uh, New York choice. <laughs> is there, a, is yeah. there a pizza highlight? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's a highlight per se, but it was like middle of the well, not middle of the night. It was like 10 p.m. We were just Oli and I were just hungry, and there's like a pizza place past Trinity Church near our hotel. Um, it was what was it called? Sen Siena Pizza and Cannoli. Um. That's the first time I ever had hot honey on a pepperoni pizza. I didn't know that was a thing either. Um, oh, hot but, honey? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. On pizza? Sure. It was yeah. good. It was really good. I have hot um, honey in my cabinet now. Yeah, good. Good enough to... See, as someone who doesn't live in New York, to me, that feels like the quintessential New York thing. You know, it's like it's, like it's night, you're walking by, like you get a slice, you're eating it on the side of the street or something. Yeah. That, that feels very New York. New York, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Or Spider-Man, so. one of the two, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> close enough, right? So did you have yours as a slice or did you get a whole pie? 
<laughs> oh, that way. Well, <laughs> we had slices because they were okay. huge slices. I'm not gonna lie, that, that place is pretty good for the price. Did you okay, do the New York like, like fold the slice into the like taco you, you, thing? You kind of had to because it was a right. thick. It was. It wouldn't stand up on its own, basically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's class. So they have. Um, they also had those square uh, square slices, which were mm-hmm. more specialty pizzas. They were pretty good. Uh, I forgot which one we had, but it was like a caramelized onion one with mushrooms. Okay. And sausage, I think. Oh, good. That's killer. Yeah. Um, it was great. It was better because there was another pizza place we went to after we went to the play, and it was just. Mm-hmm. On, it was like right off Broadway. I don't remember what it was called, but it was like it was the only place open at like 11 p.m. But that was the one where you're just on the side of the street eating a slice of pizza. Neat. Yeah, and then what was it? We also went to the Chinatown there, and my friend's friend recommended like a, a Mei Lei Wa. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a Chinese bakery, so that's pretty good. Their um, what is it, pineapple pork bun? We all agreed is their best item on there. Definitely recommend if someone goes. It's like a, it's a really small hole in the wall. <laughs> like you can either order, there's a tablet outside to order from, or if you order inside, uh, with cash for a discount. So mm. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> when you know it's good. Cash yeah. discount, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it sounds like yeah. one of those um takeout dim sum places. You know, like um. Like Wong Kok, right? We have here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Very similar. Be like one of those. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, that was, that was a good breakfast. Um, that same friend I forgot because she lived in New York for uh, a couple of years, I think. She went to school in New York for a little bit. Uh, she also recommended a place called Suru Tontan. Um, okay. It's like a soba. Yeah, it was a soba place. Mm. Um, with massive servings. <laughs> like, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Right. Like, if you go to a soba place here, think maybe one and a half or maybe uh, maybe two times the size of the bowl. Uh, Excellent. It was it was worth going for that to that one for sure. And uh, what did you end up ordering there? Udon. No soba. No, it was udon. Sorry. Okay. But which one? I don't remember. Because it was, if I look at the menu, I probably could. As he's looking uh, at it, I am curious, like, what you could. Uh-huh. Oh, you need to take a picture of every meal you have, right? That's I the... did, actually. Oh, I, see? Okay. I, it doesn't mean I know what it is, just looking at it. Oh, all right, well, <laughs> two-part problem. <laughs> yeah. Is there a menu? So, okay. I'm just curious hey. for John and Daniel. I mean, you guys... Um, you guys have visited New York uh, before, I imagine, right? In your own respective times and whatever. I mean, this experience so far, I mean, like, it's how's it lining up, I guess? I'm just curious. Have you done similar things? You had similar things? Um, so I guess, I guess similar to my child. So I went once as a kid, and then I went once as an adult, but it was for work. So, like, I didn't, I didn't get to, like be a tourist too much in the day so i just i was just kind of hanging out at night after mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. was it i was there for work but i was on my own so i kind of got to do my own thing so like i mean i'm trying to think what did i have i got sushi because when i was for work i was like i'm always expensing sushi like that's my number one so <laughs> got sushi one night it was pretty good and then yeah also also got a pizza and then i think the last thing i did was i went to like a halal cart by like rockefeller mm. center and that was also like, you know, just get it from the cart, sit down, and you know, looking at Rockefeller. And that was like, that was like, hey, yeah, New York's really cool. Like, I can, I can dig this. And then, you know, I kind of was walking back, and I was like, oh no, this is too much energy for me. Like, I, I gotta leave. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I this is why you belong on the Double Hungry podcast. <laughs> <Wait a minute. laughs> we well, really work out our memories and not our bodies. Honestly, <laughs> I actually really liked all the walking in New York. Like. The subway system, all the like twenty five thousand steps a day kind of thing. It was great. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of like you know whenever I watch movies that are based in New York and people complain about going to the subway and there's all this the rats and what have you. I really enjoyed that experience, and I don't know if it's because the rats. I was subliminally. I was about to the, say, did you like, like the subway or like <laughs> like you found a pet oh, rat that you're hanging? Oh, <laughs> you made friends oh, with oh, a rat. <laughs> <laughs> 
think it was his name was Shredder. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> uh, the you know, it was just nice being able to get around really easily, and that's something yeah. that you don't have here in LA. Right. And you right. don't need to have a car, right? You don't need to go through an exam process and buy insurance and all this stuff. It's it's just so easy getting around. I would uh, I would never want to drive in New York though. People are no. pedestrians do not care out there. <laughs> yeah, like they will cross no matter what. And you don't have to either. That's the nice thing about it. You can Definitely. easily get around. Uh, Except to get to I, the airport. That's kind of a pain. <laughs> so, so, so I was there for a work trip, um, but we were able to go early. So I actually went with Carmen um, and we were able to explore for a little bit. But on the way back, all my coworkers were like, no, we're catching the Uber. Like, we're not going to bother with the train system. And I was like, I had been there for a few days before they had shown up. And I was like, I have faith in the system. So... I took the train. They took an Uber. I got there 25 minutes before they showed up. And I don't yeah, know. All right. It was, it, was a, it was a good experience. Again, yeah. only one experience. So, you know, I can't imagine if that was my daily thing. Would I still feel the same thing, same way? Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's, just, it's just nice being able to get around. And like Macho said, a lot of, uh, a lot of cool food places. Um, we did a lot of pizza. We did Joe's Pizza. Giant sheets of pizza. I went pizza. to a Joe's Pizza, yeah. Yeah. They're like ubiquitous out there. And then mm-hmm. um, the Law Bagels, the only one that comes to mind is Russ and Daughters. Mm-hmm. And they were nice. I, I do think they, they do taste different from the bagels you get here in LA. I don't know if I have a preference one way or another. I think they're different, but they're both good. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that was actually one of the ones my friend recommended, but we ended up not going. Mm. Um, but we actually were right next to it. There's a store that's, I don't know how long it's been open there, but like it's a Japanese fashion brand that's trying to, I guess, be more global. And their one store in the U.S. is right next to Russ and Daughters Bagels. Perfect. They know what's yeah. up. Yeah, that's we a big name. Definitely a big bagels. name out there. Um, yeah. They were out here uh, for a food event or something. Um, oh. Uh, and like so, a pop-up they had out here? Yeah, it was part of a a food festival thing called the Family Style Fest, I think, or whatever. And um, they usually have it out there by uh, where CBS Studios is. And um, so they invited them out there that year. Um, And yeah, they were, I remember they, I mean, they had a, obviously they had a line, you know, um, super long line. Everyone wanted to try them. Um, I got a bite and yeah, it was a, it was a great bite, a uh, great bagel. So they, I think they were just serving locks, you know, mostly I think that's what they're most, you know, known for. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know, maybe my job, I mean, maybe you'll have a chance to, to try them one time, but yeah, they're great. Next time, maybe. What else? Uh, yeah, what else? I mean, there's a whole, you got a whole list here. I mean, like you got to just kind of yeah. walk us through what's going on. Honestly, that's most of it food wise. Uh, there's Lady M, which I never, I've never been to. I didn't even hear about until we were there because there were so many of them. Um, but we went to that one, the one in, I don't know, somewhere near the Muji flagship store. I forgot which, uh-huh. which area of New York that is, but it's all. Uh, but remind me what Lady, I mean, Lady M sounds familiar. Do we have that here? Apparently. I don't know. But, but uh, it's like a cake. It's a bake bakery sweets shop, if you will. I see. Known for their crepe cakes. Oh, sure. Yeah, that does sound familiar. Okay. So, did you? What did you have? Cake, I imagine. Some... Yeah. Uh, well, actually, when we went to Surutontan, they actually had a um, desserts from Lady M, but mm-hmm. we did not get a crepe cake there. So we just got a regular, like a chocolate cake or whatever, and we were not impressed. Ooh. So my friend uh, Oli told uh, her friend, the one who was getting married, that. Lady M's not all all that cracked all is cracked up to be. Interesting. And they're like, oh, get the get the crepe cakes. That's what they're known for. So we did the the, the what the crepe cake. Yeah. So just like, like tons like of layers. Crepe, crepes, yeah. Layered. Just yeah. like you guys thousand. familiar with this type of dessert? I'm just curious. I mean, I, I I'm know. familiar with it because of Lady M. I, I don't. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know if it's something that's widely done or if it's just a Lady M thing. I never really looked into it. But yeah. it's literally that you stack up enough crepes to form a cake shape and then you slice it <laughs> yeah yeah huh. Very nice. promise I will, admit, I, I will admit they know my weakness they have like limited edition flavors so every time it's they like do. no i gotta <laughs> i gotta get you're telling me the passion fruit is limited edition like all right i'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have seasonal flavors mm. it's the scarcity tactic there so you gotta mm-hmm. get it um yeah well yeah 
Nice. I mean, you don't have to focus on food. I mean, the other like sites and things you got activities you got to do. I know the wedding was like kind of the main thing, but like, yeah, I mean, what else did you get to enjoy? Oh, um, yeah, because it was what we were there for four days. The wedding was on the Saturday. So, yeah, we did a play on Thursday. We did. Um, what was it? We went to the FAO Schwartz, the last remaining store in the U.S. Mm. So that's that pretty cool. Very nostalgic. Yeah. That big ass clock have... tower. Yeah, do they have like the piano stairs or they didn't have any to... piano stairs, but they had the piano like display thing where you step mm-hmm. on it and it makes yeah. it makes oh, that was so cool. Notes. I remember that when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. They still have, that's on the third floor. They re- anyone can use it. They're very they want people to <laughs> to play on it. So that was really <laughs> cool. Very nostalgic. They're like, please come to our store. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember Option buying it. <laughs> I, like as a kid, I don't remember my parents ever buying me anything from FAO Shorts, but we used to go mm-hmm. all the time. So yeah, well, it was going... it was way cooler to just go, but yeah, it was too way too expensive. I think. Uh, yeah. Where was the FAO Shorts here? Glendale Galleria. Oh my god! Yeah, oh. that's right. I guess I guess I grew up more south, so I went to uh, I went to one in Costa Mesa with my parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, that's right. I, yeah. I remember the one in, in Galleria too. Man. Yeah, next to where the Foot Locker currently still is near. If the lens crafters uh, are still there, okay. like in that area, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to and those are, those okay. are some classic mall stores right there. Lens crafters, <laughs> Foot Locker. <Yeah. laughs> but uh, that New York one is, yeah. is just the last, uh, the only one now. Is that what it is? That I know. I thought that. I think that's what it is. The last brick and mortar in the U.S. Okay. That to Rockefeller honest, Center. Thought, yeah. To be honest, I thought they went out of business. So, <laughs> props to them. They, they still have an online store. Actually, they still sell online. Oh, okay. But some stuff you can only get at the store, apparently, mm-hmm. when we were looking at stuff. So that's how they get you. Exclusive. I was about yeah. to say limited edition. I'd be buying it right then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They still had the um, Zoltar, I think is his name. That that dumb fortune teller guy. Zoltar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah, guys are it. creepy. They creeped yeah. me out when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's fair. They, I don't like animatronics in general. <laughs> But you have a Disney pass. They have so many animatronics. <laughs> I don't anymore. I haven't. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> what else? Uh, Rockefeller Center also had the um, Nintendo store. That's that's there as well. Uh, so we, we went there. It wasn't as impressive as I thought it would be, honestly. Mm. Is that uh, because you've been to Nintendo Land now? No. Or have you been to Nintendo Land? Okay. <laughs> no, but it was just like, it was smaller than I thought, honestly. They did, however, have like a Donkey Kong barrel thing, a uh, life size that was a charger, like a public charger. So I was very impressed. <laughs> mm, oh, I thought it was something you could buy. So, okay, got it. Oh, hell. So it's literally just a wine barrel. <laughs> <laughs> I came home with a wine barrel. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. So that was really cool. I mean, you could come um, home with a wine barrel, but you just need to tell, you know, wife, girlfriend. It's like, hey, no, it's a charger. It's, it's <laughs> practical. <laughs> uh, it, it's the centerpiece for the living room. Yeah. <laughs> How else are we going to charge our phone without this barrel? (laughs) Exactly. What else? Oh, there was this big ass. I don't even know these were things like a Harry Potter store. Like it's a store theme specifically. It's only it's only Harry Potter stuff. It's Mm -hmm. got like wands from the movie. Like apparently they're opening a Harry Potter land in Japan. So they were collabing with uh, a Japanese artist to have like anime style character art like hermione yeah. snape uh harry like that stickers notebooks all that stuff um they had like it's two floors it's, that's the that's the crazy part like it was it was a huge store it's and I'm bigger than the uh, bigger than the nintendo store yeah i'm much more impressed it was more in theme too like yeah. the, the, the the stairs to go down if you remember dumbledore's office or yes yeah, office he has that big ass bird thing that spins you go down a spiral staircase, basically like in the like in the movie. So it was really cool. Um, did they have robes? I assume they probably had robes. Yeah, yeah, they definitely did. I, I thought Universal had Harry Potter merch like on lockdown. <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering, but it feels like this is <laughs> this is separate, right? They I mean, probably, I, mean like, I guess it's wand. New York. It could still be like some NBC Universal collab, I guess. Probably, but I, then. I thought the advantage was always Universal's like, you want merch? You got to buy a ticket to the park. Right. <laughs> you need to buy the privilege to buy the merch. <laughs> That's right. Not here. Like they had butterbeer. They had, they had like a, a bakery section that uh-huh. they had like 
what was it? They had a mandrake. Uh, if you remember the plant, it was in a little a planter, and then it, it's actually the shape of the mandrake. Um, and it was chocolate coated raspberry peanut butter thing. Um, you said they have butter beer. Yeah, they did have butter beer. On top. how does that compare? How, nice. How does that compare to the butter beer that's at the theme park here? Is it never the same it. thing, or is... oh, he's just oh, never okay. had it. I have not, I have not been right. to Harry Potter Land yet, so I can't. I have no comparison. But like, they also had uh, bottles of it if you wanted to, like actual regular size bottles, and you can buy a six pack of it, which was really cool. Oh, Everything wow. was a theme. You could, you know, the trunk that they that Harry used his his luggage to go on the train. Mm-hmm. They they were selling that. Okay. Um, one of the interesting things I don't remember how many thousands of dollars it was, but you could get a a set for uh, what is it, your acceptance letter to Hogwarts by the actual prop person, prop designer. So uh, the one who wrote it and everything. So that was really cool. Uh, there's just so much stuff. I'm I'm still waiting on my letter. You know, it's, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm 30 years old, but any day now, any day if you don't it's have coming. A chimney, how are they going to give it to you? That's a good point. Yeah, I just <laughs> there's probably so many owls waiting. Yeah. <laughs> They've all just been crashing into the roof this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even return to sender. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, not another one. It's like, yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, what was? What else? Oh, we, there was this boba place that's apparently bit. They, it got a lot of stuff on TikTok because it had like an egg shape thing. I don't know, like an egg drink. It's like in a, the, an egg. The bottle is like egg shaped. Yeah. I, what is it? Unfortunately, when I went, it was sold out, so I don't really know. What and is I'm it sad called? That I'd, what was the place? It's uh... Biao Sugar, B-I-A-O mm-hmm. Sugar. Mm-hmm. So it's a uh, it's a boba place, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I went to so many different boba places. It was great. Oh, wow. Let's take a look here. Here's an egg-shaped thing. Yeah, that thing, the devil's uh, egg. Okay. Um, that is cool, but supremely impractical. Like, what? <laughs> right. <laughs> So you like, drink. How do I put that in my car? You drink it. Well, yeah. you don't have a car It'll... in New York. No yeah, problem. Exactly. Right. <laughs> how do I put uh. that on my subway? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, like, how does it stay up? Oh, it must have a flat bottom. I was just picturing this thing rolling. I don't away. know. It looks pretty round there. I yeah, you just, you just gotta really hold. Just don't hold it the whole time. You got it. You just have to use arm muscles, which I don't have. But <laughs> presumably, if you live in New York, you do. I guess. <laughs> But the other cool thing, it's like a really tiny spot, like a hole, a, a hole in the wall thing. Yeah. But then if you saw it on the Instagram, that lion head or whatever, yeah. you actually have to reach into its mouth. to. That's where they give you your oh, order. Oh, to get your order? Hold on. Yeah. There's, a, there's a pig here. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really cool. I mean, I'm into it's a little, little stupid aesthetic thing, but I'm into it. It's a fun gimmick. Yeah, definitely. Very cool. Feels very like Indiana Jones. You know, you got to like stick your hand through the, yeah. the thing. Yeah. <laughs> And then a large egg starts rolling towards you. So, <laughs> but this one's full, filled with milk tea. Yeah. So, right, and you run towards this one. You run towards <laughs> this one. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I I know you mentioned that you uh you know um, watched uh is it just a musical or or multi- is that plural? I mean, I know you are. Uh, I've wanted to do multiple, but money. Oh, okay. Um, but what did you? Because I didn't with? realize Sweeney Todd was a big thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're doing a revival and i didn't know uh, oh, uh-huh. it was good i yeah. don't know so we, i'm sad i missed out on that one because we did uh the play that goes wrong it's okay. a play that's a farce about uh, a community college that's doing a play mm-hmm. and everything goes wrong obviously like the set falls apart nobody remembers their lines um like they don't know it's just it was really funny it was here in la before and i watched it here okay um so i wanted to watch a i wanted to watch it again b uh, Oli and Salem never saw it, so they were down. And C, the Peter Pan goes wrong. It's coming to LA next month, which is basically the same premise, I guess. It's the same group, the same community college doing Peter Pan instead of a diff- of a murder mystery. Mm-hmm. So I wonder primer basically. Okay, but it sounds like you uh, you enjoyed it. Was it kind of? Oh, definitely. It, uh, what you? It was so. still as funny as I remember for sure. So it's kind of a. Kind of a parody, I guess, almost in some ways, like kind of a commentary on, you know, how. I want to say commentary on anything. It's just, a, it's, a you know, farce like kind of comedy. a, yeah, like a tongue in cheek kind of a, 
Yeah, definitely. Like making fun of itself, right? The art of musicals yeah. and stuff. Like uh, 22 Jump Street, where they basically acknowledge that they're just doing the same thing and they got to break that fourth wall and <laughs> have fun with it. Yeah. But in place. Yeah. Very similar for sure. I did. Uh, I remember I was around. super. Oh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I remember I was super impressed in New York just how many Broadway shows they had going like every night. Because yeah. like in LA, it's like you're mm. waiting for like, oh, right. there's the, the one, one going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And in New York, it's like, no, you can just pick like from 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. That's, that's really cool. It's like a, like, it's like a food court. You know, just a food court. You just go around and pick what you want. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's the New Basically. York packing district. That was production. And hopefully the How right are your place. seats? How are your seats uh, at, the, at the play? It was a, a this one was off Broadway, so it was a, a smaller uh, theater. So it was that yeah. no matter where you were, it was really close. Yeah, like it was maybe two, three hundred people max. So it was really small. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember when we watched, or actually, I watched by myself when I was in New York, uh, Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon, yeah. And it was a, a older theater, and the seats were just really small, really tight. It didn't bother me, but my neighbor, who was like six three. Was able to mm. get through one song before mm. he turned to his wife and he was like, I, "I'm gonna watch from up there. I can't do this." What? And he, he literally stood and watched the rest of the show because the seats were just so small. That guy mm. clearly is not from New York. Like physically, <laughs> like the size, the size of the Legs. seat is actually like yeah, this is very little leg room and they're very narrow seats. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's the case. I only saw one stage production. That's why I was curious what my job's oh, okay. experience was like. It was. Oh, if you're talking about that, it was not too much leg room for sure. It was still also kind of tightly packed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now this was um, be this wary. Was an, this was an on Broadway uh, sh show versus like off or mine or his for yours. No, mine was off Broadway. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, what is the difference? It's not in the big theaters, you know, like you like where Wicked, like we walked by Wicked, Hamilton, Sweeney Todd. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if we saw Aladdin. I don't remember if that's still going, but we saw like th those three big ass theaters, and they yeah. had so they were huge. You had the the whole, you know how Pantages has that that wall or the the facade is basically the 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 play or whatever. Mm. It's the same thing, but on a bigger scale. Got it, man. And my naive like guess, for, yeah, my naive guess for the definition is off Broadway means not on the street of Broadway. But I'm just I'm gonna throw that guess out there. It's pretty close. Because, like, off Broadway is just further. Because all of them are, yeah. or at least, no, so, yeah, some it's, of the just, it's just like one street over, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. on the strip, off the strip. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <what that is. laughs> Maybe yeah. a little less debauchery, but yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's New York. There's quite a bit of debauchery <laughs> to go around. <laughs> and was this a, uh, I forget if you mentioned, was this kind of, what time of day was this show? Um, it, was an eve it, was, it was Thursday night. So it was, yeah. I mean, they do performances like during the day, right? They have like an, like, an afternoon show or something. I don't know. I'm just asking. Maybe on weekends, maybe like matinees. I don't know mm -hmm. about weekdays. Not yeah, sure. that seems they like do a... two shows a night, but I don't know if they do in the daytime as well. Like there might be an early afternoon show and then an evening show. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there wouldn't be enough crowd, but you never know. Okay. I'm actually really sad because I wanted to watch Mean Girls, but I didn't realize that shuttered because of the pandemic. Oh. Sure. So I didn't oh, watch it, it here in LA mm -hmm. because I was like, oh, I'm going to New York. I will yeah. watch it there. And then I yeah. uh, never you get know? to see it. That's too bad. Well, Couldn't I guess it gives, gives us another reason <laughs> to uh, maybe to visit together. Visit where? It's gone forever. <laughs> it's shuttered. <laughs> I see. Oh, it's just so like. Let's <laughs> <I thought> so. <laughs> stick to food. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, rip. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just okay. So, is that is that kind of about you know everything you've hit? I mean, that was a uh, was a pretty good, pretty good. Uh, I think so. Wedding aside, yeah, I think so. So, from your stay there, um, you know, whether from food or activity or whatever, like what what would you say stood out? What's kind of the top thing that kind that of stood goddamn out? subway system? Mm. It's just so good. What 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 was the nearest subway system from where you were staying? Like how close was it? I guess to... it was about a five minute walk from our hotel. Five minutes, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. No. Um, 
maybe eight minutes ish. Mm -hmm. But okay. like it was just getting around New York is a lot easier than you than it is here taking our train system. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's just it's just so well connected out there. Here, yeah, we, we I mean, have we're, a metro system. Here, <laughs> we're barely celebrating like that. We connect like two parts of town without having to transfer more than you know twice or something. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, isn't to, it? I'm trying to think. If I want to go from like West LA to like over to the valley, like, mm -hmm. don't I need to go to downtown mm -hmm. and then like all the way back right. around? Because there's right. just nothing that goes across. Exactly. <laughs> you could you could head to K Town and then take the red line up north, but that that goes up to I think that goes all the way up to Northridge. Yeah, but yeah, so. but he's saying you have to go into downtown. You know, you yeah, can't, you can't go from right. the west side to the valley. This um, is yeah, that's yeah. true. So. It's unfortunate. Yeah. So if it in New York, it'd probably be just one train. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we got a. It's a good thing to experience, it, I think. Yeah, it reminded me of Japan, but on a, a very similar scale to to the Japanese uh, railway system, mm. so. except uh, um, more with more rats. <laughs> right. More rats. <laughs> That's what we only saw and one. Ninja Turtle. We only saw one. <laughs> York, That's one more than Japan. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like uh, a real true. big one too, like a real sizable, right. like, like possum-sized rat. You know, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like if there was a rat in a train station in Japan, they would shut down the whole thing. It's like no, <laughs> yeah, right. They shut you down. They comp you. They give you like a ticket yeah. to your employer, like saying that's why you're late. You know, they bow. They apologize profusely. You know, like, yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Well, York's like you got much. I was gonna say the good thing is you didn't go during peak summertime because that subway system quickly become oh, a torture it's, system. It's uh, it well, it wasn't too bad except for one day. Like it got really grossly smelly and humid as hell. But air conditioned cars, all of them. So mm -hmm. that was there. That was the plus. That's Unlike that's here. good prep for Anime Expo, which we'll we'll talk about later. But. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Speaking of uh, <laughs> air conditioned cars. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, anything else kind of stood out for you, or um, how about food wise? Like, if you wanted to like try out one thing again, or like go out to more bagels, what? more bagels. Okay. Yeah, I want to try another bagel spot because it was really good. I actually really liked it. Okay. Yeah, you know, we have, I mean, LA has a smattering of, of you know, great um, bagel places, but, you know, obviously, like, in a place like New York, like, it's it's a place, it's something that's just kind of ubiquitous, you know, you just kind of go around the street corner, down the block, like, it's, there's something right there, right? It's so accessible. Yeah. Here, like, you have places throughout, but it's kind of a destination, you kind of go, unless you, like, live in that neighborhood or whatever, and you go <laughs> there, but otherwise, it's, yeah, you gotta search for it or something, so. I feel like, yeah, I feel like when I was there, it's like every street corner had like a bodega with like bagels. Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't <laughs> yeah. you don't have to try super hard to get like exactly. a good bagel. <laughs> right. Because it's just there. So, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. OK. Uh, well, glad you had fun. Like I said, I mean, um, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll have to plan a trip uh, together to to get out there. But New York. I'd be so like, down. Yeah. I mean, New York sounds real great, um, but I'm sure it's like um, it can be. It's just like everyone's just always on the move, you know. That's yeah. kind of but that's what uh, I like about it though. Always active, something going on. Lots of rats. So rats. Only wave. one. Only the one waving. They're actually you know. just <laughs> constantly running from rats. That's why I feel so busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or maybe they're chasing the rats. I don't know. It's like they've just trained the rats have trained the humans to just like kind of follow them. Now. So that's <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> it's like, flowers for hours are not gone wrong. Exactly. <laughs> well, speaking of weird segues, let's talk about Anime Expo because uh, that was <laughs> something. <else laughs> <we're talking about. laughs> Who is talking about weird segues? <laughs> Literally, no one. <laughs> well, here we are. Yeah. Um, rats, anime rats, maybe. No. There you go. <laughs> you know, the Pokemon has a rat, right? It's like a rat. That's an anime. Pikachu's, right. like, a, Pikachu's like a rodent. Yeah. Kind of, maybe. Right. Pikachu's <laughs> fucking huge, too. I didn't realize. Like a rat, like a New York rat. So there you go. <laughs> like a subway sized rat. 
So. Well, apparently only has a life-size Pikachu from the Detective Pikachu movie. Uh-huh. And it's... Let me grab it real quick. It's massive. <laughs> Neat. A life-size Pikachu. So tell me again when the last time you guys visited uh, New York? Forget. For me, it was... Yeah, I want to say for me it was 2017 or 2016. <laughs> okay, okay. This is a life size Pikachu. Is that life size? Yeah. Like, to dog. to yeah. scale? Okay. According to Nintendo, yeah, it's life size. Yeah. I mean, in How New tall York, is that? Like, oh, wow. It's like That's three feet? feet? Two and a half? Three, yeah, like two, two feet? And a half. Yeah. Like, yeah. imagine this riding on your shoulder the whole damn time. <laughs> Ash probably has the lats <laughs> of a, an Olympic uh, shot putter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, he's he's in Cairo appointments all day now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once he hit 11, it just starts going downhill, huh? After Apparently years. he became a Pokemon master. I didn't know this. Somebody was yeah, telling me. Really. It, it took like 12 years, but yeah, he won. Yeah. It, took, it took 25 years. <laughs> 20, oh, shit. oh my god. <laughs> yeah. well, so that's how long the series. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a lifetime. It's a lifetime I'm of so work. Old. Well, his yeah. problem was he kept getting, letting go of all his good Pokemon. <laughs> that is true. He's like, that ooh, a good true. one. Bye. I don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was because of him that when I first started playing Pokemon, I was like, Butterfree? Like, this Pokemon's oh. awesome. And I was like, no. Right. <laughs> Butterfree was not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're susceptible to fire? What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you can't beat Dragonite? Come on, <laughs> Butterfree. <laughs> Ash can do it. And he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay well nice um but yeah let's talk let's get into that about a little bit of anime expo um you know uh brought uh we have a kind of perspectives from both my show and and daniel because they were both yeah, like there year. this year but uh they both had their own kind counts. of experiences to uh, what they did over there so i don't know um my why don't you start um kind of take us through like uh First, for the uninitiated, what is Anime Expo? Well, Anime Expo is just a big ass anime convention. Uh, so think SDCC, but for weebs. Daniel. Um, That's exactly how I would describe it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just convention for weebs. Yeah, that's. I can't say it better. <laughs> yeah, it's like the biggest anime convention in North America these days. So. So. Um, is that exclude as far as where it is? Is it exclusive here to LA? Like it, it's the largest thing in America, but like it takes place only here in LA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every year. other there's other anime conventions throughout right, the country, right? But right, as far but, as Anime yeah. Expo, specifically, yes, right? yes, yeah. yes. Although it people, was... I think there was buzz that people were hoping that they might move to a bigger venue, and that LA is too small, which shows how many weebs of us there are. But uh, yeah, <laughs> what like, would be a potentially larger be... venue? I'm just curious. Like, I'm just trying to think. What I don't. I don't. Like a know. Vegas or yeah. like Texas. Yeah, I think it would have to be like a like an Austin or a San so, Diego. So, so or outside like of LA, is what they're LA, saying. LA. Okay. Yeah. No. In LA, yeah. There's. I mean, in LA, even in the country, it's pretty big. So I don't know. Right. But it was it was packed. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, I didn't realize it started in '91. Mm. Whoa! Like, that's the first okay. anime expo was in 1991. Okay. Yeah, those were some hardcore. Shit, what anime was even out back then? This was like... Pokemon 96. We talked about this though, during 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> it's well before my or time. 95, I don't know. 95 or 96 came stateside. Well, stateside, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I'm trying to think. Dragon Ball Z for me was what, like 1990, like 9, 2000, oh. 2001, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Like middle school, maybe. Um. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, so oh. Michael, uh, what, uh, yeah, what did you, what were you up to at AX this year? Um, uh, me, I was actually, so one of Oli's friends, uh, is someone who was doing like booth work for an artist from last, like for last year, maybe a couple of years ago now. So, but the artist didn't come to LA because of COVID. Um, she didn't catch COVID. She just, you know, still wary about COVID, which is fair. So she needed help for for the booth and exhibitor hall. So we were I was one of the one of the helpers. It was great. So you what did that? Badge. Uh huh. Okay. Oh yeah. So the artist is Thousand Skies. She sells like cute corgi stuff. Um, like the if a uh, cute big ass corgi plushes. She started like red panda plushies. Um, anything that's like 
super cute corgi and animal related like pins enamel pins she started doing hats mm-hmm. um like what else keychains lights like a desk light uh but really cute stuff uh that's what she sells so i was there as just one of the people selling uh yeah it was fun but but the, honestly the best part was the exhibitor badge that we got so it's it lets you into the uh into the you get to go to the private party entrances so you don't have to wait in lines to get into the con uh for exhibitor hall you get to you can be there as early as seven and it opens at 10 so you can be there three hours early to set up but if you're set up you can just wander around which is really cool um a lot and then like basically lets you get to all over the place without having to deal with crowds uh i got to do artist alley before opening as well so did you get to explore the space um you know even as an exhibitor i mean i guess because they you know you get there early right i mean you get to access the space early but i mean did you actually get to go Mm -hmm. like i know only she said that she worked at exhibitor with other with a different company before and she only got like an hour per day to explore um with Thousand Skies, it was a lot more chill, I guess, because we had enough, we had like extra people, so we could just come and go as we needed if we wanted to wander around or if there are any panels you wanted to do, mm-hmm. uh, any time specific stuff, you would be able to just go to it, no problem. Nice. So is this the, um, is this the, the... yeah, that's Thousand Skies. That's so they, the stuff we were selling. So they make these plushies of various, mm-hmm. uh, what yeah. Are these? animals corgis shiba inus uh ducks that's a pomeranian raccoons red pandas um interesting story though uh, actually so they they sell at other cons they're from san jose and there's a big the there's a big san jose con called fanime con um so they normally they like that's kind of where they started but this year at fanime for some reason they were gonna unload a u-haul with their merch right it uh, the fanime staff cut it off an hour ahead of time, so they had to take their U-Haul home with all their stuff. But the U-Haul got stolen right out of their I don't know f- driveway, front yard, or wherever it was parked, with all their merch in it. What the heck? That's crazy. That's wow. Wild. Ah, yeah. So that was kind of, but because of that, like a lot of people were coming to show support at fanime at mm-hmm. at LA or uh, LAX at, at Anime Expo. Uh, she made merch based off of that. Uh, yeah. Really cute, like uh, stickers and stuff. So, you know, she's making the best of a bad situation. But anime stuff is crazy. No, it sounds like it yeah. Is. I, I was, I didn't want to pry, but I'm curious, like, because yeah, my experience walking through, I was like, I wonder how much like people are clearing from these like booths. You know, like how much do you clear here versus just like an online store? Did it feel like it was pretty busy, like in terms of people showing up? Um. For me, I think so. Part of it, though, we were like in the back, so we didn't get as much traffic as she would have wanted. But it was still like a, she beat her. She it was her best AX so far. Um, nice. Okay. Yeah, like every, it was uh, the, the, what she said it was like a thirty percent, thirty seven percent increase from last AX. Um, nice. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So it's still it's still pretty good. The other thing though is it's an anime con. You can't mm-hmm. trust these people. What there's so much there's so much stuff that gets stolen from anime cons like from oh, really oh yeah like from the from the booths yeah people just like vendors. swipe stuff i thought us and... weebs were such a good natured bunch oh hell no <laughs> like wow. Wow. what is it i know some i know someone who ended up taking a sword like uh you know because there's one of those yeah. they have the the sword shops or whatever i know someone who's able to walk to take a sword without being noticed um, a bunch of some guys, prints, hats, like, mm-hmm. yeah, they, people are shifty at AX or anime mm-hmm. cons in general because it's not just AX. Like every con I've been to, uh, you know, people people lose stock because mm-hmm. of uh, shoplifters. Well, are you grouping Daniel in there somehow? I mean, I feel like implying that. No, nah, clearly he's 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 yeah. He's, I, uh, I was a sport, or was it? I was like an oblivious, like yeah, it's sweet summer child, exactly. You didn't even realize that sh- that weebs are actually terrible people. Mm-hmm. This is like me at like <laughs> high school grad night, being like, "What people did drugs? What?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Daniel, I'm yeah. kind of curious to hear your side as a uh, you know as a visitor. Have you first um, time? I'm surprised. It's first time. Oh, I had no idea. 
first time for me yeah it was uh I guess as a as a long time weeb, it was always on my like. It's like this would be cool, but I never quite was brave enough to take the plunge, and uh, finally this year I did. <laughs> what what uh, I guess what was stopping you? I guess a closeted weeb or something. I don't know. Yeah, pretty much. You know, it's one of those things where it's like you like a hobby, but you're not sure if you want to be in like the giant conglomerate of all the people mm-hmm. who like your same hobby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's kind of like eh, you know, like I I've, I've been on the fence long enough, like. Okay. I, I should probably do it. It, it was a good time. I, oh, I had good. a really good time. So, yeah, how, how, so what did you do? Did you do any panels? Or was it just all shopping? Or I, I was just there. Um, so I went with a college roommate of mine. We just went for one day. Uh, we went on Sunday. So that was day two. We were hoping like maybe day two crowds die down a little bit, which not really. Um, no. but <laughs> day two was the busiest this year. Um, was it, there were, there were some panels that I thought would be pretty interesting. Um, I got to give them credit. Like, you know, it, it looked like a pretty cool list of panels, but man, because of the crowds, like you have to line up like three hours ahead of time to get into a panel and yeah. they, and also some of the panels they have, I understand it's like for crowd control wise, it would take too long otherwise, but some it's like, Oh, you want the four o'clock <laughs> panel. You actually got to get in the room at like two o'clock. Cause like Cause those they're... three panels are like back to back and they're not going to like swap the room out mm-hmm. so it's like That's okay you, yeah it's like you want to see the four o'clock one you got to line up for two but you really got to line up for noon because like the line's gonna be two hours long <laughs> yeah so, so, so i didn't i didn't have time for the panel so i was mostly just walking mm-hmm. around checking out exhibitors checking out okay. merch and booths and stuff so this um, is stuff that you just enjoying of, the vibes yeah this is mm-hmm. stuff that you kind of learned or you kind of picked up as as you kind of went along i don't know did you necessarily have like yeah a, yeah did you necessarily have like a game plan of like things you wanted to hit up um and then maybe it just didn't kind of work out the way you intended yeah so yeah so we kind of looked ahead of time and we saw like the the exact panel schedule didn't come out until pretty close but we saw it was like oh you know this is like this is pretty cool like if we have time we'll do this but um yeah i didn't i didn't quite realize how busy the crowds would be my college roommate who i went with he went he went once to anime expo a few years ago so I think he he was kind of telling me he's like he's like yeah you know that you might be optimistic with thinking that like you're gonna make it into this, <laughs> um, so so yeah we you know he and I just like I said we kind of ended up walking around we kind of just ended up walking around and even that took you know we were there from like open to close basically nice. of you know just just walking around but yeah again yeah. vibes vibes were a fun time just kind of being um, we didn't cosplay but like just kind of seeing some really awesome mm-hmm. cosplays people were doing checking out awesome booths so it was. It was a really yeah. good time. I'm surprised Definitely. though. Like you can't uh, with just the one day, you can't really do a lot. Like even if yeah, it's, it's just exhibitor hall, yeah. yeah. Like walking around exhibitor hall alone could take a day because it's that big and that crowded and just so much stuff to to look at. Yeah, um, each each booth just has like so many lines that it's like yeah, you kind of have to pick and you're like you're like oh this is the I don't know like yeah in the exhibitor hall you're like oh this is like the Crunchyroll booth or this is the Hulu booth like yeah you know like I'm just not gonna make it through this like twenty person line like go to the next one <laughs> yeah but like even that's just exhibit hall alone then you have Artist Alley where the independent artists are are there selling their stuff like that had over five hundred plus artists this year and it's it's always hard to walk wow. through because it's so damn crowded. Um, and then you have freaking the entertainment hall is in, in a, well, that one's not as much to do, but like even the demos for, for games, those lines can be half an hour to an hour long. I mean, but it, yeah, it's no, a lot definitely. Of yeah, definitely. If I went again, I would, I'd want to check out some of the panels or they also mm-hmm. had, um, they also had kind of like a separate area that was like a game area. So it was like, you know, mm-hmm. you play like board games, card games, like video games, whatever. Yeah. I think that'd be pretty cool too, just to like meet some people and, and hang out with. You yeah, know, play like some games. They were, what was it? They were doing a um, I, I missed it unfortunately, but on the day three they were doing a uh, a Street Fighter Six tournament for a oh that's no what was it for an SSD a two two terabyte SSD. That was, I mean, there's no that way was the I'd prize. Win, but... Yeah, there's <laughs> no way I'd win, but uh, that it's would be so fun. To go, yeah, I was know? about to say yeah, it's I feel like I'm trying to think fight fighting game arcade. That's like a very anime japanese like <laughs> vibe yeah <laughs> honestly um was there What's anything the food situation yeah <laughs> at con ax has been trying like they before they didn't have it but like i think since 2019 or something they had food trucks come actually into the convention center mm-hmm. they used to be, all be outside you have to exit the con and then 
and they'd have to wait in a long ass line just to get back in. Mm. Now they actually have it inside the con, so you don't have to exit, which is helpful. Let, let's be clear though: inside the con means inside the convention center grounds, but you're outside. Yeah. In, in oh, LA, I thought they just like crash it through a wall or something. <laughs> beep beep. Here I am. <laughs> yeah, L.A. outside July. You're waiting in yeah. line. It's pretty damn hot out. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is true. Yeah. They also like um and because you know it's a con they they uh upcharge you a lot more than normal yeah which is very unfortunate uh, um, but... they also what's up go ahead oh uh this year they also started to do they they brought stalls in or whatever kind of like a very very small section like six to six because mm-hmm. they had uh was it a stall with skewers uh but they didn't have that stupid baby bottle thing, but they did have Boba. They had like a lot of those. The Boba one was packed, man. I really wanted some, and I was like, I'm not waiting an hour for Boba. <laughs> I went. Uh, it's is. I went uh, at night because I had time to kill while waiting for while Ollie was doing a panel. Um, it was ten dollars for a regular freaking <laughs> regular regular Boba. Wow. Yeah, fifteen if you wanted the anime theme Boba. That is uh, wow. That what is, is criminal? An, what is anime theme Boba? They had three themed drinks. The names were based off anime. Like, what was it? One was a One Piece one, one was a Demon Slayer one, one was a Naruto mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Uh, then it had like a sticker on it, on the cup. But other than that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if we're talking about... I was about to say, if we're talking about fandoms who will pay up like the butt for exclusive mm-hmm. shit, mm-hmm. anime fans. Oh my god, we pay so oh, much yeah. money for exclusive shit. <laughs> what is it? Some of these fi- one of these figures over here is like $400. Exactly. This, this one is like <laughs> one of them. Insane. And the problem, right? The problem is like because because you're like so in the mindset, you're walking through like the artist alley and you're walking through like the exhibitor halls and you're like, oh shit, that's only like two hundred. Like that's a good deal. Mm-hmm. Like like I should get in on this. <laughs> yeah, but you also got to watch out because some of those resellers are scalping like crazy. Yeah. Um, some of them are definitely doubling it more uh, or doubling the price of what they got it for. Mm. Wow, that's crazy. Um, I mean, did you? Uh, so, Daniel, since uh, did you go all four days? No, for me it was just the one day. Um, was it? Yeah, because you know, in laws were in town and stuff. But but yeah, I would agree with my child. Like, if you if you want to do, you know, yeah, if you want to check out the panels or like the special events or something, like you probably can't just do it in a single day. Like a single day is enough mm. to walk around and, and yeah. get the vibes and everything. But yeah, yeah if you yeah. want to check out the events, yeah. you, you just need to line up for so long and set aside so much time of your day that like mm-hmm. you would need to come back for another day at least. So, my Chow, I mean, since you've been there before, um, like, do you feel the crowds have been different? Like, uh, you, you know, since COVID, you know, times or whatever before that or, you know. Are you talking size-wise or behavior wise um well no, why well i'm thinking size but i mean like yeah maybe the type of yeah behavior too i mean we'll say last year was worse uh this year had the most like it, it's just more people this year than mm-hmm. before um but last year had the worst a uh, worse people because it was like 2022 yeah that was the first one since uh the pandemic mm-hmm. shut everything down so a lot of people kind of forgot how to act in public especially more so because weebs are awkward already uh, so it was i don't know it was rough <laughs> but still fun it was still a lot of fun and like dip, as long as you depending on where you were it was still uh, great interactions with random people because everyone's there for the same thing basically okay so it's always just a lot of fun this year though i will say it was a lot more calm but again i was in the back like of the inter- exhibit hall so like it was we didn't have as much traffic as some of the mm. bigger stuff, yeah. mm-hmm. so I didn't see as much. But I mean, everyone seemed more chill. Everyone, especially because people knew about the people. A lot of people who were coming to the our booth knew about the whole U-Haul stealing yeah. act uh, thing from up north. So a lot more people were more, I, I guess, chill, understanding, and you know, just very supportive. Okay, all right. I will say too though, because we were near the eighteen plus section of exhibit hall and. That was a lot more chill than it was before, like in 2019. What does that mean as far as chill? Like, maybe it was 2019, maybe it was 2018, but it was, there were like demos and stuff you could do at the 18 plus section, like with the VR headset. And like, it was, oh, it's yeah, spicy. It, yeah, it was, it was right. crazy. And then they got, uh, 
I guess because it got on the internet, uh, social media, or whatever. They they said when you would go to the eighteen plus section now, starting in after that, it was no re- no fo- no recording, no picture, <laughs> which oh, is fair, I guess. I see. That's, that's probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, Do um. Yeah. yeah, I felt like the crowds were pretty. I guess I'd never been before, but the crowds were like everyone was, you know, pretty nice. I was super impressed. Was it? You know, it's like most of my interaction with weed fandom has always only been online. Mm-hmm. So I was super impressed. I was like, wow, we have like a super diverse like fandom here. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you got weaves from every corner of the country. Like it, it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And it's not just like, you know, how a lot of it was weaves would just be like fat nerds or whatever. It wasn't. It it's oh, yeah. it's a lot of different kinds of people. Yeah. No, it was really cool. Yeah. I'm just curious, even though Daniel, yeah. you were there just like one day, was there um you know, somewhere something like that you were really going for or that you either something you were able to do or something that surprised you or, you know, something, I don't know, just something that stood out for you. Um, uh, yeah, fair question. So I think, yeah, I mean, I think the main thing that I probably enjoyed the most was like the artist alley, like walking through it. I mean, there's just, there's just a lot of cool art there. I mean, you you get the total range between the, the super cute corgis, like my child's talking about to, you know, like the, you know, it's like the epic, you know, anime to the, you know, giant titty anime like <laughs> drawings, like right, like you can you can see it all within like yeah. that alleyway. Um, what I'm trying to think, the main place I actually ended up waiting in line for was um, was that my wife's really into these these two bears on Instagram. They're called Mocha and Milk. Um, and oh, they, that's they, huge. Yeah, they they had a big booth set up with like again exclusive merch, and I was like, all right, it's exclusive. I I gotta wait. And I gotta buy something. So so I came back and I'm like, hey, look, you know, convention exclusive keychain. Um, so that was that was the main line I ended up waiting in because once I saw that, I was like, all right, even she can appreciate this. <laughs> so did you come back with a lot of merch? Uh, not too much stuff, but you know, it's like. I mean, it's funny when you sign up for the survey, you know, it's like, oh, you're you're activating your badge or whatever. Right. They're like, how much do you think you'll spend? Right. And the the lowest bucket is 100 or less. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, that's wow. like the that's like the oh, you cheap ass like you only spent 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's so much like and stuff like anime merch in general is expensive. Yeah. Like, yeah. What is it? So that's part of the registration process. They ask you to estimate how much you think you'll spend. Yes, that is like like in the oh, when wow. you activate your badge, they ask like three, four mm. questions. You know, like where are you from? You know, what, how old are you? And yeah, how much are you? How spend? much money? Yeah, you're gonna give us. You know? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like trying to think of any other experience I've ever had in my life where they ask you that question. Right? Drawing blanks. Customs. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Entry or country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, John. But, yeah. Um. You know, you and I are not as weeby i guess i mean have you i don't know have you been he's got hella gundams he's a closet weeb oh i see (laughs) there was was some some gundam stuff at anime expo you know it's time it's time to join yeah Yeah, maybe they have some exclusive kits you know and you've been these are the kind of things dude i saw so many i don't want to know yeah i don't want to know I saw so many people walking around with giant. I mean, I guess that's the thing, right? Some booths hand out like giant, like IKEA sized bags. Mm-hmm. And yeah. You see them walking around with like just oh, full yeah. of gun sure. Dumps. sure. And you're like, mm-hmm. damn, this guy, cl- he checked out today. <laughs> yeah, he's, and there's he's like not eating the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> like a Gundam specifically, if you spend a certain amount of money, you get a bigger bag, you get a, a lanyard, you get mm-hmm. a con exclusive like keychain thing, right? Depending on how it's much like a you spend. Kickstarter. It's like the more you spend, the more unlocks yeah. you get. <laughs> your stretch goals, yeah. <laughs> yeah, here's your personal stretch goals. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Oh yeah, I guess that was the th- that was one thing. I mean, I thought I was like pretty in anime. You know, it's like I watch, you know, I don't know, maybe like three, three or four anime every like mm-hmm. you know season they yeah, come out. Yeah, but and you even I was so. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, but even <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't recognize half these cosplays. Like, damn, like mm. where is like like how many different things out. Out there, I guess my issue is I don't play Genshin, which I think Genshin's like a lot all of the rage. Were Genshin, yeah. yeah. But like, I was surprised. Uma Musume uh, was really po- was a big anime. Like they had yeah. uh, my friend was the one cosplaying something from that, and they had like the four hundred dollar shirt, twelve hundred dollar hoodie, or whatever at one Man. of the booths. I didn't see that, but yeah, that that was super popular for sure. Uma Musume is horse girls are wild. 
I guess. At um at Anime Expo, I forget. Is there does he is there ever like a particular like theme or like kind of main thing that's focused on, you know, uh, every time, or is it just just an exhibit of like all showcasing of all the different uh, types of things? Like, is there one Basically, thing like like this year is a certain theme or like you know kind of uh-huh. like not specifically anime, but because like there's so many different anime, but mm-hmm, AX mm-hmm. themselves they do a theme for their mascot characters. Mm-hmm. Um, like this year was a fantasy party kind of thing because there was a the girl was a, a an archer character and their their main guy mascot was a wizard um and like our the exhibitor badges uh or in the industry badges they were like a magic circle kind of thing okay okay but other than that it, with the exhibitors themselves or artist artist uh, alley participants no yeah okay yeah i feel the like so much is... a walk anime yeah, I almost feel like the more niche, the better, because it's like you walk through like the artist alley the you can see a lot of like stuff from the more popular ones. But then every once in a while, you see someone who's like, oh, my God, you got that one character from that one anime and like, hell, yeah, I'm buying that shit. And you're like, man, this person like they, they got the perfect customer right there. Yeah, <laughs> like, they dropped two grand on it or something, you know, so yeah, <laughs> yeah cause it's just like it's like that one anime from one. 20 years yeah, ago exactly. and no one else cares about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Um, so Anime Expo usually takes place during, uh, like it tries to fall, you know, on the 4th of July or whatever, like during that mm-hmm. weekend yeah. holiday. So this one was, a, I guess, a little, I don't say different, but it, it, it fell, started on a Saturday, right? And then yeah. ended on uh, July 4th on the Tuesday. Yeah, it was really weird. I wonder, do you think that had any bearing on like the type of, you know the the crowds or the dynamics. Of of, you know because it started on a weekend, right? Like on a Saturday. Yeah, because usually day one is the biggest. Uh, in terms of logistics, it's usually the biggest mess, which mm-hmm. it still was this mm-hmm. year. But they usually try to fix it up by Saturday because that's normally yeah. the biggest, the right. biggest day. Right. Yeah. So, but it's a little weird. It started that sense. on Saturday. It's like yeah, everyone's just I don't know, just pouring yeah, in, but, right? Like. As expected, Monday was the slowest day because it's in, it's not a day off for most people, exactly. and it's like between the, the weekend and the holiday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so that was yeah. Sunday was the biggest day, but for the actual fourth, the Tuesday was pretty pretty busy, more pretty than busy. I expected, honestly. Okay. Uh, Daniel, remind me which day did you go on? I went on Sunday. The so day. okay, yeah, yeah, and that was so. pretty busy for you. It was the busiest day the of busiest? all four. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. It I mean, was busy, but I'll say the logistics like were sorted. Like I didn't yeah. have any issue yeah. like getting in or whatever. Like it was it was smooth, just just busy. It's, yeah, again, it's funny it's that's first day oh, typically. Yeah, usually yeah. the first day is usually just where they have to yeah, sort everything out, right? But okay. Yeah. But it's just it's funny because I've been to the convention center, the LA Convention Center before for other events. Like I've been there for like I don't know. I go for the car, the show, car show usually. Show. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've been there. There's Cookie Con one year I went to, um, which I actually don't recommend because it turns out there's only so many cookies you can eat. But that's a separate <laughs> point. <laughs> I, I challenge accepted. <laughs> but yeah, but it's, it was just funny because like all those other ones, I'm like, you're like, oh, you know, there's people. But like, I've never had an issue. Like, I've never walked through the convention center where I'm like, oh, everyone is sitting in every available seat to like eat their food because mm-hmm. like there's just nowhere else to be. It's like I've never seen the convention this busy. Yeah. It's crazy. I will say it's not as big as SDCC yet, but the panels are starting to seem like it's getting there. So, yeah. so Comic Con is actually a larger event compared to mm-hmm. AX. Oh, okay. definitely. Okay. And that's this next week, next weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think SDCC is is a physically bigger venue too. So it is it can fit definitely. More so why does I will it say? I mean, just curious why why. Um, do we have it in LA, I guess, as opposed to some other location? Apparently LA is the weeb capital. I don't know. Okay. Like, Sounds it like was... it won't be there for long either. No, I, I'm pretty sure it will be because part of it, like it was a few years ago, like it, it started in other, another city. Then it went to Long Beach one year. And then that, after that year, it came to LA mm-hmm. convention center. Mm-hmm. And a few years later, like it became the LA city council voted on 4th of July being like AX weekend sure. or whatever. So every year now in the, in the program, you have a letter from the mayor just saying, Oh, oh Hey, we're, uh-huh. we're happy to welcome all right. these 
weebs. all these weebs basically yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming and supporting all right i, I do love like yeah. i do love when you walk outside like like when we left at, like it was kind of around dinner time and mm-hmm. you know at that point people aren't really eating at the convention center anymore but it's mm-hmm. like you just walk down restaurants in downtown la and you're like huh shake shack like that's a lot of like anime cosplays like hanging out at Shake Shack, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like it's not the usual crowd I see here. <laughs> yeah. And then if you take the sh- the shuttles went all the way out to K Town this year. Like the there's a shuttle that went to the line hotel from the convention center. So you oh, got a okay. Hello Weebs there. Wow. And Little Tokyo is always packed with people who couldn't even get in the con either. Um That's amazing. so it's just it's it's crazy. It's not like because with SDCC, the I forgot what that district right outside the convention center is, but that everything there turns into uh, all themed for the con, all the bars, sure. all the restaurants yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it seems like that's happening a lot now here, just not as not walkable. <laughs> Instead, it's yeah. right. You take shuttles out, but it's it's really cool. I do like that. Okay, that's great. Is the shuttle free? I've, is mm-hmm. it? Oh, okay. Yeah, the shuttles are free. Um, I am curious from both of you. Uh, start with Daniel, like, is your kind of first visit, but um, from what you've observed, I mean, and you may touch on it. Like, um, do you have any advice? tips for you know maybe the first time visitor um you know things to look out for or to you know things you would want to do um yeah yeah uh i'd say first time visitor like yeah kind of go in you know not being too sensitive about personal space uh <laughs> like understanding that it's it's gonna be crowded and and yeah as far as scheduling goes like plan plan a lot of slack time like don't try to be overly ambitious or like if there is something that you really really care about um make sure to like you know don't pick too many things but like pick you know one one or two things you really really care about and and give yourself Mm -hmm. plenty of time to do it yeah cool uh my i know you know whether as a visitor or now as kind of a you know exhibitor um you know and that kind of relationship with visitors and stuff i mean what what advice would you kind of give or want to share? Uh, if there's something that you're going to for like a free item, like uh, what was it? There's this one thing. There was a demo from uh, a video game by Hoyoverse for ZZZ um, where you get an acrylic stand just for doing the demo. Uh, don't wait too long before you do it because I was like, oh, the line was long when I went on day two. So I was like, all right, I'll just go tomorrow. Uh and by the time I got there, they ran out of acrylic stands to give out. So I was like, ah, I don't mm-hmm. even care anymore. Okay. So don't wait too long if there's something specific you want. Got it. Okay, cool. So again, if there's a year like John or I go, um, or do we have to dress up? I mean... Yes, you do. You specifically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll... So everybody who gets to ask how much do you plan to spend on your ticket, it just says you must dress up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure, go. I'll, like, I'll say, what is it? There's probably like, I don't know. My, my estimate was probably like 10 to 15% of people cosplay, which is, is it's, right? you know, like, okay. it means that you don't have to cosplay to like walk around, but like definitely anywhere you look, you will see like multiple people who are dressed yeah, up. It's so. really cool. Some are really good. Some not so much, but they still put effort in. And that's like, the, that's really fun to see. Was there a particular cosplay that um, you were impressed with or stood out to you uh, this year? There was a guy who did a stupid... It wasn't stupid, but it was like a uh, an in-and-out shake. He was a strawberry shake. Mm. So he was in the cup. He strawberry filled. He had a straw. It was it was great. Oh, what? <laughs> it's still, okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Very, very on theme for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorites. <gasps> Or this guy who had, um, he had like a wizard cloak and hat on, right, on the staff. Mm-hmm. But it was all magic, or Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but it was all trap cards and uh, whatever the spell cards were <laughs> in sleeves. So he just had, he just had long ass sleeves of cards taped to his staff and stuff. What the? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Right, but, so you don't have to necessarily be anyone recognized what character. You can just be all of them. Whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something you're passionate about. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think if I went back, like, I'd probably, yeah, to my test point, like, I'd probably dress up just because it's, it's kind of fun. Like, I don't know, it, it's, it's fun seeing other people dressed up. So you, you mm-hmm. kind of feel you're like, you're like, I want to, like, propagate the good, mm-hmm. the good attitude. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I have a, I have a Tanjiro freaking, uh, what is it? Uh, Howry in my, in my closet. If it wasn't so damn hot in that convention center, I would have worn it. Just 
as yeah. a casual thing. I get I give a lot of props to people who are walking around and like, yeah, it was hot. Some girls, you know, like their cosplay had heels, and I was like, man, that's oh, yeah. Yeah. props yeah. to that. That's dedication. <laughs> um, so the convention, I mean, like it is air conditioned, but just probably not enough for everyone to just kind of feel yeah. um a semblance it of it depends on how crowded it is. Like when mm-hmm. it was like in at my booth at least when it wasn't too crowded, I actually got it kind of cold honestly oh okay but okay. it was inconsistent because it depends on how many people are around right gotcha okay there um as far as getting tickets um i understand if i recall like usually you can buy tickets almost like immediately after the event is done right and like not anymore oh not any okay well i yeah. it used to be that way right like and they yeah, were usually the, that way. the cheapest that you could buy them at. You buy it the day the, the day. day of of day four they start okay. selling it as they have, oh wow okay <laughs> <laughs> they used to be so they but don't now like they they only started selling in Jan- january 1st this year now is it so. cheaper necessarily um earlier on or or yeah they still yeah. increase the price as it gets closer to the date and it, it sells out you know when you get too close so yeah they didn't oh, used yeah. to yeah yeah i guess it didn't <laughs> used to but yeah the i know this year it did in the past couple so it's yeah I, there's no incentive to like hold on and be like maybe day of yeah. like that's when i no, it's it's just no, as yeah, soon as it's kinda, available. If, if you know you want to go, then you need to get it. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then, you know, also there are other variants, I guess, of the Anime Expo too. Like uh, they are doing like a smaller con in Ontario mm-hmm. called AX mm-hmm. Uh they they started doing it last year, they're doing it again this year. It's like a two day con. Um it's okay. I wouldn't go for uh, last year. We went for two days, mm-hmm. like idiots. Oh, um, what? Okay, it's there's not a lot to do. At least last year there weren't. Maybe like that was the biggest feedback they got uh, last year. It's just not enough to do, not enough to justify a two day con. So maybe that'll be better this year. But we're planning to go one day. Just okay. Um, yeah, I, that's that's interesting. I again... I don't know why. Though, like, why they're trying to do another con? I guess because like a lot of smaller cons are doing a lot of smaller but multiple cons of the mm. same like company or whatever, and just in different areas. So that might be why. I don't know. Okay, but you're thinking that in this case, like, they should have more things to do. Is that what you're saying? Kind of like there weren't as many, like there weren't enough panels to justify two days or workshops and stuff. So okay, nice. All right. Well, um, I mean, any other thoughts from you guys? Um, totally. I mean, semi-related because it was there, but like not really related to anime. The one thing, if someone hasn't been to LA, they outside the convention, they got those like you know danger dogs. Yes. Right. It's like the hot dog grills <laughs> yes. with like the onion, whatever. Bacon wrapped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For that anyone. Cool. Danger dogs. Yeah. Yeah, I think oh, they're I danger they were dogs. Ghetto dogs. Both probably valid. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably both valid. But what you're uh, saying? Uh-huh. I, I was just saying that those are good as always. So you know, like you have mm-hmm. to leave the convention for that. But yeah, you know, if you're if you're into super greasy and you're not thirty and need your vegetables, like that's a great. <laughs> yeah, it has option. a nice like they balance. Have onions. They have yes, onions, onions the peppers. Uh, yeah, no. yeah, no, it's good. Come on, John. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. Uh, uh, you know, also kind of a side thing, like, because, you know, we were making the food, you know, for July 4th, we didn't get to make the sausages and stuff or cook those. So I have like a pack of hot dogs and stuff and bacon. So I made my own danger dogs. So I nice. wrapped the there bacon in go. there. I, I threw them in the oven or whatever. Um, and then uh, I didn't really have vegetables. Per se. I guess I had the onions or whatever. So that was the closest thing I threw on there. And then I just slathered it with all the condiments because like danger dogs, they... um. <laughs> They come with like the mayonnaise and the ketchup and mustard, like all the condiments, right? Like it's just, I, it's definitely not an abomination. It's just like a, just this convergence of all <laughs> the things you can put on a hot dog. <laughs> hey, it's a good bite. It's a good bite. It's, a, it is good. it's its it is own good. kind of glorious treat. Like it's, <laughs> it is a good, and I, I feel like that's a good LA special. I I might have seen it in like San Jose or something, but it doesn't feel like any other city. Like I don't walk out of too many other events and I'm like bombarded by like ten <laughs> different hot dog stands, right. and I'm like I'm like you guys have this market nailed. <laughs> Correct. Correct. So they started taking like Venmo now too. It's crazy. <laughs> Venmo, wow. Zelle. Yeah, it used to be cash only, right? But now they're taking electronic right. payments. That's right. See, they're they're trying to keep up with the times. So they're getting um, sophisticated. 
Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in adi- and beyond everything that LA has to offer, I mean, Danger Dogs is definitely one of them. So make sure you uh, you jump on that. So, um, well, I think that was a good note to kind of finish off with. So um, thank you uh, guys for jumping on and uh, talking about your experiences and nice catching up with you guys. Um, John, I don't know if we're going to make our way out there at some point to the AX, but maybe we will. Um, but otherwise, it was, uh, it was a fun, it sounds like a fun time. So um, we should do this again. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about, but whatever we do, I'm sure it'll be a, a fun time. So um, you got anything else you want to say? I don't know. Um, John, it sounds like you are just, you know, beaming with anticipation. What do you mean? What do you mean? Sounds like I didn't say anything. <laughs> I was like, I very intentionally have not said. <laughs> sound of he, silence. I didn't, re- I didn't respond to your invitation, to AX. I did not say anything on your commentary for more topics. <laughs> He's like, let's just wrap this up, okay? Let's wrap this as much as the bacon wrap hot dogs, okay? Let's get this going. Right, let's, let's make like a hot dog and wrap it up. <laughs> well, it sounds like we've come to the end of a of another episode. So, thank you for joining us, where we talk about our uh, adventures and our favorite food groups. Um, we're excited to bring you more uh, and more and more. So, reach out. Uh, we're here on Instagram. I'm at Dumb and Hungry. My is at un- my underscore Chow. You can email us at hi at dumbandhungry.com, where you can leave us your feedback and your love letters. You can find the videos here on YouTube. Won't you like, subscribe, and smash? You can also find the audio here on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo. I'm my show. And I'm Daniel. I'm the successor. <laughs> okay. And on your next food you adventure, <laughs> remember to try <laughs> one of each. Oh boy. That's long. That mission accomplished.